HP. Thinkers are great, but doers change the world. Yeah! When I was first diagnosed, I simply said to myself, well, this is another obstacle in life or another step in life that you have to overcome. And if you sit around and mope and cry and beat up on yourself, it's not going to help you. Rockwell Reed was healthy and active at 54. When he was diagnosed with prostate cancer, he canvassed all the available treatments. The clear winner was a revolutionary surgery method and the doctor who pioneered it. And you cannot feel more closer to the patient than what you are in that scenario. Dr. Ash Tawari at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in Manhattan uses robots in the operating room. You're sitting comfortably, you're all zoned in, and your hands are controlling those instruments with a pinch grip. And you move your hands to any direction, any angle, and instruments move exactly what I'm doing. If the technique sounds space age, that's because it is. People, when they travel to space, one of the astronauts can get an appendicitis. And obviously during the space flight, uh, there is no surgeon on call. So what to do in that case? People thought that if we have a device which if connected to the human body, and we can train anyone to connect that to the human body, and then can be remotely controlled by a trained person, and in this case a surgeon, we can take care of a lot of things from a distance. Dr. Tuari and his mentor, Dr. Manny Menon at Detroit's Henry Ford Hospital, realized that robotic surgery could have enormous impact on the treatment of prostate cancer. Prostate was never meant to be touched upon. It was very well hidden inside the human body, deep in the pelvis, surrounded by the bones, very important nerves, they travel almost embedded in the wall of the prostate, and in prostate cancer surgery, surgeon gets judged, not just by what he takes out, but by what he leaves behind. And it's tricky. The margin of error is very narrow. As a surgeon, you're supposed to take all the cancer out, and then also to leave these nerves behind, and these nerves are really very delicate. Maybe two or three hair strands is all what these nerves are sized. Dr. Menon secured a grant from a local philanthropist, and he and Dr. Tawari set to work getting to know the ins and outs of the technology known as the Da Vinci system. To train for it, Tawari resorted to an old technique. I draw. I make a lot of figures. I have a full book in which I draw my operations, and uh, I will think it through in my mind as to if I'm doing things which makes sense. Give me 30 up, lens instruments. The surgeons quickly recognized just how game-changing the technology would become. So there are certain structures we cannot appreciate till we have the right tool or the vision to see that. That I started seeing structures which were very delicate, very fine, but now we could see them that they existed. Today, 70 to 80 percent of prostate cancer procedures are done robotically. And despite the success of the surgeries, no complicated operation is risk-free. Rockwell Reed knew the dangers. There's the incontinence problem. There's the impotence problem. You can die on the table. You can come back and you can not be yourself or you can come back and be yourself. Like my wife said when I was first diagnosed, she said, hey, you're not doing this because of us. You're doing this because of the grandkids. I'm sure you want to see them through life. Though the surgeon operates the robots remotely, he is physically present in the operating room. When he said he would be operating from a console, I, I, I thought he was going to be off into a separate room, hidden somewhere, like in a dark room around a console. But at the morning of the surgery, when I got taken in, I went inside via a wheelchair, and when I got out of the wheelchair, the first person that I bumped into was Dr. Tuari himself. The fact that I use it is not because it's remote. I think it brings me closer to the patient so that not only before surgery I can talk, I can talk to them afterwards. I can feel as if I'm inside the patient's body and try to fix something.
The operation was a success. And because it's much less invasive and requires much smaller cuts, robotic surgery reduces recovery time by weeks, sometimes even months. And here I am today, it's roughly two months, and I can attest to it, I'm feeling much better. Patients come from all over the world to New York Presbyterian to be operated on by Dr. Tawari, who has now performed more than 3,000 robotic prostate surgeries, and he looks forward to more advances in robotics. The robotic field has evolved because of two major components. The vision is immersive and magnifying. And the second component is that the instruments are small, precise, tremor-free. I think the third level of surg surgical innovation will happen when surgeons can literally have a Superman kind of envision. We see things magnified, but we still cannot differentiate within 100% certainty that this is a cancer cell and this is not. Because then you can only kill cancer cells and leave everything which is not cancerous. Even then, robotic precision won't replace human skill and experience. It comes down to the gifted hands, and I think that's what Dr. Tawari has been blessed with. Coming up next. You can actually see the veins, the arteries, the nerves. They pop out at you, so it's augmenting your reality. I see them beneath the skin where they really actually are, and I just aim right for it in the image. I can have my hands and the tool and the patient and the image all in the same environment. World financial markets change even when you're not at your desk. Bloomberg gives anyone a snapshot of what's moving, plus top news, charting, and ways to track their portfolio right on their iPhone or iPod Touch. Download the free Bloomberg application at the iTunes App Store and stay in touch with your money wherever you are. Bloomberg Mobile.